Hello and welcome to Comics Experience Graphic Novel Month Club. Uh, this is for the month of December, and our book this month is "I'm Not Okay" it's by Charles Ford. Who we have here, right here, with us, and there's an audience who should make some noise now. Yeah. We should make more noise. Very yeah. good. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. Good. Yeah. Uh, fantastic book. Um, everybody like this book that had a chance to read it? A chance to read it? Okay. It's good. No, it's really strong. Um, let's let me let me start where I, I would start the same. I'm gonna start with the same. Why comics? What, what what's it? Why? Um, I, solitary. Oh, I should be. Oh, I should be doing the microphone, shouldn't I? I should be pointing the microphone towards. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're so low tech. We're going to have mics soon. We're going to have little thing mics oh, nice, at some point. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So why comics? Why so, comics, yeah. Uh, okay. So I tried a bunch of things. I was going to be a musician. Uh, worked in a pizza shop. Um, I was going to do pizza. That's what my brother does. But uh, I think it just, I think the, the solitarity of it, the ability to just do it myself. Yeah. I didn't need to ask anyone's permission. I do it all in my room. Yeah. It was like a huge thing of it. And uh, I, I found I, I enjoy organizing my thoughts on paper rather than, say, talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully this isn't too bad. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. No, I just, I think it, for whatever reason, it makes sense in my head like, uh, to organize the thoughts in my head onto, yeah. onto in the It just makes sense to me form of communication um so yeah um and uh and i was lucky enough you know i i, I, I started you know i always i could never finish a comic as a teenager like i get started where to go to start mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um and i like floundered a lot i i kind of fell back in love with comics like two applying to the school the center for cartoon studies and that place really gave the motivation that I was kind of missing. Sort of like gave me permission to do comics, like to be like, okay, this is what I'm to sort of accept it so, like, to this um, for it. Uh, and it also just kicked my ass. It just uh, it's kind. Of, people sometimes describe it as camp. It's cool, sort of like that. It's mm -hmm. sort of like it's like the what's Dave Sims thing, like thousand garbage pages or whatever yep. you know there's a lot of that it's two years of just pages and pages and pages yep. and you can, if you can get through that you'll start to pick some kids yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> eventually now when were you at uh at the cca uh i was the or second CCS. ccs i was the second class so i i graduated okay. in 2008. okay so almost 10 years. so second class so uh did you did you feel in that second year like that, that how was the school at that point? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, um, like had they figured it out yet? Had, or or like oh we made all these mistakes with the first class we're going to be better with you? Or... Yeah, it was interesting. There were definitely the first class they were they kind of had a chip on their shoulder. You could tell I got in there because they they also knew they were sort of guinea pigs. And right. I think they they really took it upon themselves hard on the too uh, and it, it, you know that was a good thing for us you know to be coming in after that it, they, they roughed off some of those hard edges um but it was still pretty rough you know uh, it, you know there was i expected a lot more craft stuff um school it's, it, it's it was preferable to me that somewhere like the cuban school uh because it's it's more focused on storytelling mm -hmm. and design and Every project you're thinking about the whole package and not just pages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that that really appealed to me. That has served very well. To design and install. So, yeah. Did you look at Hubert as well? Uh, I mean, I did when I was a kid because that seemed like the only option. Right. Um, um, but uh, but I didn't. The only other school I considered was SVA. I went. To But when I got, when they accepted me up there, it's no question. 
And I, I mean, I know I was lucky when I, upon graduation, James Sturm has started the school. I, I just barely. <laughs> 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 I was probably, I'm sure I was like the last one. Right. All right, we'll let this guy. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that, cha- that place changed. Super. And it, you know, it led me on a path, I guess, trying to get back to your original question. Um, yeah, there was rough stuff about it, but there was also amazing stuff. I mean, you know, Steve Set is a faculty, and mm-hmm. he is I don't know, mm-hmm. the wealth he has about history. It's, it's, that, that was insane. And plus his collections here. So yeah. <laughs> would have examples of um, And uh, yeah, it just, uh, you know, being lucky enough to have someone like Barry who came and did a like a two day workshop I, in my second year when I was really didn't know what I was gonna do for my thesis, I was really sort of hitting a wall, banging my head against the, the table. She came in, did this two day workshop, just had it, had to get just keep your pencil moving. That just uh, it feels like I haven't stopped since that that job. It's just sort of broke something. It made me a lot less afraid to just to just do to just do pages and worry so much. Um, yeah. Stuff. Just keep your pencil. Yeah. That's that's a big part of the battle. It's fighting fighting tricking your own mind to mm-hmm. to getting just done. <laughs> so thinking about today, like what's what's your uh, what's your output? How many pages a day do you? Th- um, I'm. Let's see, it really depends on the book, you know. Like like this, I did in ten page chapters, and I would do each chapter in three or four days because uh, they're you know the, they're not intensive pages. When I do books like this, like I'm not okay with this. It's a lot. Just it's a lot less. After anything, it's more getting the story done as, quick as possible and as quickly as possible. Um, because I, I enjoy that immediacy. Because I do it, I released that chapter by chapter through my Patreon. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, even though it appeared to most of the world as just a book, sure. um, to me it was a lot. It was like serializing because I gave it to, you know, about 100 Patreons. So it was cool to get it um, mm-hmm. um But, you know, every project's different. I, I, I vary, you know, sometimes. I do a page a day for like stuff like Revenger or Slasher, um, but it really it's weird. It, it, I'm not like a the kind of artist who draws all the time. Like a, like a lot of people, I, it's that thing that called it the mark making disease where they can't stop moving their hand. <laughs> and I've never been like that. And it kind of took me a, a while to get over that. Like right. I, I used to always feel like I had to have a sketchbook all the time. I'd always be doodling. Um, but I kind of realized like that's not the type of artist I am. I really only enjoy drawing it's the service of doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't I like drawing, but it's not it's not like a thing that you, that kind of relaxes me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of people it's more of a thing I don't feel like I need to set up guide. Does that make sense to you? No, it makes a lot yeah. of sense to me. What's um, what's it like when you're looking at the blank page? Like, do you need to? It sounds like you need to have a plan. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm. 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 I. I need a plan, but I also give myself a lot of room to throw that plan out, uh, or let the once the characters start moving. A lot of times, they just take it away from me, and it just starts to. You hear people say that it's true. You know, it, it writes itself sometimes. Um, but um, yeah, I'm a big believer in setting up guidelines. I like setting up even if I end up breaking them down the line because it gets me going in a certain direction. It's, it'll set. You know, I'll set the style, the work, you know, the page size or the grid I'm going to use. A lot of that. You know, when you're starting some, any you know, uh, daunting because there's a thousand decisions you have to make. So I find it really to to set up um, just little tiny things that I have to bounce off of. 
And uh, even, you know, like this book, it's, you know, I, I was probably looking at a lot of uh, cigar pop strips. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah, no, uh, so I was like, okay, this is my, you know, this is sort of the wheelhouse I'm going to work in. Um, and like early in the book, you can really tell it looks like, pop <laughs> but it sort of it turns into my, my a little bit. As it goes. Yeah, I, I, for me, that's like usually how I start yeah. setting up. I guess it's kind of like never gotten a D and D. I feel like it's kind of a friend to. It seems like fun setting up. How much uh, are you pre-planning? I mean, are you are you building sketchbooks uh, mm. with thumbnails? Are you? four sentences describes where you're trying to go with something? You know, um, it's always different. Um, the end of the fucking world started out very first sketch in the book. It's uh, the main character, James, uh, doing an ollie, this one here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tiny dry. Um, did that in a sketchbook, and uh, and it uh, the idea for this character kind of came to me in my head um mm -hmm. so i did the first chapter without knowing the rest of it. right um, so it can i can so, so some some of my stories are very improvisational like mm -hmm. that once they sort of get up um but sometimes like slasher I wrote the publisher wanted to see an outline so I wrote a whole outline, but <laughs> I probably only stuck to the first page of it. <laughs> right, 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 right. Because it totally changed. Um, which luck? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I mean, it, I like. I mean, if you look at all my work, it all look different. So I, I really enjoy. It's hard for me to sit still. I don't like. I can't draw the same way all the time. So I really trying stuff. Or trying, you know, like Revenger was an like an 80s comic sniper. Because I never drawn in like American size, you know, mm -hmm. 11 by 17 uh, American comic book, you know, doing it like that. Because uh, I'd always done like some Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, you know, it, I used to like reject mainstream comics, but I was getting back into them and reading the stuff I read as a kid, getting into stuff I had. I was like, oh, see what what I I attack. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. was those from seems like a good place to go backwards a little bit, maybe. Yeah. So, so tell me about you reading comics as a kid. Like, what did you read? Did you like? Were you? Because it seems to me that you probably were super. Yeah. Um. I mean, the very first stuff was Peanuts in the newspaper, and Blondie. So that was like first big thing. And then my older brother was like five years older than me. Yeah. X-Men 1991. <laughs> and he started, we started riding our bicycle shop, Wolfhead, Wolfhead comic books. And can't expect. So he, uh, he was in comics for about a year, you know, bought a lot of X-Men and uh, tech war, tech war, <laughs> William Shatner. We had a bunch of those. And, uh, Soon I, <laughs> I know, I know, it's so weird, uh, and and I just and a lot of uh, oh like Farland Spider Man, sure. Eric Larson Spider Man. Sure. I inherited all his collection. He got out of, and I sort of, I we had like X Men number one that Jim Lee kept that going until like issue one. I, I thought that was my duty to keep collecting right. that thing, um, and then you know got into Image. I love that stuff. Rockefeller, Steve Platt, Mark Larson. And I still, I mean, I, I there was a time I, I was ashamed of like that stuff, but now I'm sort of example. I love it. I love the passion that are in those books. Except they have a big influence. I think. Uh, and um, 
Let's see. And and then, you know, I discovered girls and not discovered when girls existed. So, no, I, it's, a, it's a new land. When you, when you, when you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I became status. aware of yeah. them. And then, uh, so yeah, comics fell by the wayside and, yep. and I got into music. And um, I moved to California when I was like 22. There, I was feeling kind of lost and too. Sure. Heidi Ho Comics sure, in Santa yeah, Monica. Great store. Started going in there, and I just got first like Love and Rockets comic at nice. that place, and yeah. got Black Hole, all this stuff, that, and just sort of dove back. It just sort of took a, it just sucked me back in. Oh, backing up a little bit, The Max was a big book. Mm, yeah. That was, and that was like the first time I got a taste of community comics. Mm -hmm. uh, he had. If you remember the classifieds he had in the back yeah, of the Max, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I had like people pals and stuff back there. That, that was sight. And of course, you know Sam Keith. Nothing else on so at least my small. Of that. And um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a bunch of turning points. Like a friend I worked with at a movie theater handed eight eight ball. Yeah, and but but yeah, about two thousand four, I got back, sort of, led to apply to the school. Be like, hey, this is one of. You're like in your mid twenties, though. I was yeah, I was like twenty, two. Yeah, I was one of the, the oldest, but, um, <laughs> but it was good. I mean, they say the male brain doesn't show it. <laughs> Or mature until 25 years old. Sure. Uh, which I'm, I'm really glad I didn't have. You know, I, I dropped out of high school, so I like uh, pressure right to college because <laughs> I sort of like I screwed up. But I got my GED and just jobs for five years. And I'm really glad I did because I, I just did 16. By the time I was 20, I'm hungry to learn. And it was yeah. the best time to really jump. Accepting teachers as, as teachers and that's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> telling me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, the yeah. first time that I was aware of was you know, the punk world. Yeah. Um, and you were, you were self publishing those as many comics. Tony Shenton like, mm -hmm. talked you up. <laughs> and uh, and we bought in, and we were really impressed by just sort of the level of passion and verb that's in those books. What was it like doing a book as a mini comic where you're entirely responsible for sort of the whole income? You know, because a lot of times, I mean, today, a, 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 an artist that's coming out of the Cartoon Center mm. may even be graduating with a contract, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right? yeah. Like that's, the, yeah. that's sort of the new model, right? Like these yeah. kids who are 21 years old, and they just did this school, and they've been recruited by Scholastic and mm -hmm. Random House and, like, actual big <laughs> publishers. Yeah. Uh, and you came out of the school, and you decided to do a mini comp. You know, which and I and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there wasn't really any structure from you graduated from the school, and then it's kind to, of good luck, right? Uh, like, yeah, I mean, there was opportunities. You know, I met editors. I I, I met Eric Reynolds at CCS. That started a relationship where I sent it and write me back, so I knew I was reading them. But but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's yeah, it's tough. You know that's a problem people have with schools like that. It's like, well, what are you doing to get these kids a job afterwards? Yeah. Know, it's, an, it's a challenge. Yep. Uh, um, but that school also is, is a community, which I didn't really touch on. That, that's a huge part of it. You, if you um, get into mini comics and stuff, you are like meet all these. People. All of a sudden, you're going to shows sort of build up audience sure. uh, and you know that's what i did i was lucky enough my thesis at school 
two Ignatz Awards. Um, it's called Snake Self Published, and that really helped me at because I had some attention uh, to do things like the end of the fuck. Okay, I'll read this guy's stuff. Um, um, but yeah, it, it's, <laughs> you know, I haven't had a job for the last five or six years, which I'm ever thankful for, and I'm always crossing my fingers. Um, that's down to cheap living and health insurance in Massachusetts. Is- <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, but uh, what was the question? Well, so the question I think was, um, I think the question was, like, what does it take as a 22, 23-year-old to do mini comics and then to – because you built that into an actual publisher. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and, I, and it was a pretty quick transformation, as I recall it, from my side of the counter. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Shenton is like, well, look at – there's this cool mini comic. You should buy it. And then all of a sudden – and now he's publishing 18 <laughs> mini comics. I mean, maybe not 18, but you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, you scaled up really fast. Yeah, you know. And I'm I'm really interested in in that in that yeah. part of it because you know, mini comics are not traditionally a way to actually make any money. Yeah, historically um, speaking. No, of course. Um, the thing I did those books were I sold them for a dollar each. There were usually eight pages of comics. Very small, like this big. And you're photocopies, right? You don't yeah. you don't have an offset printer. You're no, no. you're going to Kinkos. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I graduated. To, I bought a nice office printer okay. at home. Okay. But you know, it's basically a photocopy. Yeah. Um, which is that's another part of it is if you can own part of the printing that yeah. really help your bottom line. Um. And so what I what really turned the you know so I started publishing my book and. I was like really enjoying this format, doing it monthly, serializing, which I'd never, it never occurred to me to serialize before. So I started asking friends I knew to do this with me, the same thing. Um, and uh, I was like, and I'll publish this. And I turned it into this oily comic. So it quickly turned into publishing five books a month. And I got about 300 subscribers, probably that's the highest part of it. A lot of stores like you jumped on and um, so it quickly built into this thing and I was like paying royalties and I was a publisher. <laughs> right. Um, and it was this, it was about two years I did it, um, until I burnt out. <laughs> um, but it was kind of, it was, it was crazy. I mean, I, I didn't have money at the time allowed to do my work. Also, um, I think I put, I'm, I want to, Talk about myself, but I feel like I introduced some cartoonists to people that wouldn't see them. Uh, that was the biggest reward for doing that, because I'm sending out five comics, four of which were artists. I all of a sudden are getting in front. Of see, them. Um, so that was. Uh, what about some of the mechanical aspects of? Yeah, that? because because I know that certainly as as a store, uh, end, end of the fucking world did fantastic. For- and then Melissa's book did pretty well for mm-hmm. us and then couldn't get traction with any yeah. of the other minis that, that were coming out. No fault of anyone, right? Like, that's yeah. not like, yeah. Ah. But it, was that an issue for you as a publisher where there's a level of success that you're having and then and then there's a different level of success for the things that you're publishing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it dep- I, did, I did two issues of Michael Ford. Uh, that was the highest selling. You know, I probably printed two thousand of those each. Right. Um, and uh, but some books I would print enough for the subscription, and that's it. But it traded off. You know, I got to publish Michael Ford, so I was yeah. able to put that money. And um, yeah, it's. I I wish I had more. You know, and a lot of it was I was doing it all by myself. I wasn't paying a printer. I was printing at home. I was folding and stapling everything. You, you were literally folding and stapling yeah. as many comics yourself. Yeah. So 2,000 copies of the Michael DeForge comic. Yeah, I started to get a carpal tunnel. <laughs> six or eight hours, probably an issue, just yeah. physically. 
Yeah, I got pretty fast. I got pretty okay. fast. You know, yeah. I bought a nice big paper cutter. Right. I could cut more than one at a time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it's. I enjoy doing it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I part of me hates it, but it, a part of me is like, I love production. I doing that part of it. I love designing, some, some state shipping. I love shipping stuff. I don't know. Really, that's interesting. People hate shipping. I find it very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so it all it all really worked out. Like, I, I, I was really into it, and not everybody has that shipping. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, well, I think this is one of the things that we see with a lot of cartoonists is that that a lot of them have craft mm-hmm. and like have that that's their passion, right? Is the creation, and it's a much smaller number that are that have the business part in their head that they're willing to do that. And I guess so. That might be one of my questions here: is how much of Oily was, uh, I guess you planned and how much of it was just oh, i'm doing this and i don't know how to make money or not like did you actually sit down and figure it out like i can i, I have a throughput i can mm-hmm. do five comics and i'll make this amount of money yeah. and it's a living yeah yeah no i i would uh it was a little bit of both it was a little bit of i don't know what i'm doing mm-hmm. <laughs> but i'm gonna do this but it, you know i would you know when it came down to it i was doing math and trying to figure out the numbers and uh and I figured, you know, I can do this. It, it worked out, um, and uh, and it did, you know, yeah. for a little bit, you know. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But uh, yeah, and you know, it's it's not. I I don't want to say like it. it oh, what? I'm not like a, a business business smart. I really don't think I am at all. Um, I I think it just I just had. This, interest in the production part of it. and i got i was lucky enough to get attention on that at the end of the fucking world you know that really started the whole thing so it was probably the first work that I got a reaction like that. you know i remember getting emails from you mm-hmm. and jeff luster um, we're like we fucking love this comic yeah keep doing this oh my god you're so good yeah and that was that was like really you know the first i was getting reactions like that yeah. from all over the place all of a sudden and it's like oh you know this little book that I was, you know, kind of shitting out, like not really shitting out, but I was. No, I know what you mean. You know, it was an exercise getting me to just produce. Sure. Work. Well, all mini comics, I think, yeah. at the end of the day, that's what they are. Is can I do this? Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, but some some are very beautiful. Some, you know, I I've sure. done screen printed sure. you know, sure. full uh, mini comics. They intensive. So this. Was a different sort of thing. It's all about getting back to what you know Wednesday is. You know, mm-hmm. getting back. You know, serialization and getting it out there on a, mm-hmm. a time basis. Well, and that was one of the things I think that impressed us the most was was that you did. It wasn't like it succeeded, and then you didn't fail. Like three yeah. quarters of people, like I'm moderately successful. I'll never produce work again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, no. hate to, I hate to put it that way, but no, no, no. that's it's, often it's, how it how it comes out. You know, no, I've, I've, I've had those thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to do this this month? You know? No, um, <laughs> no, I, I, that, oh yeah. So that's something I to talk. So when I was at CCS, like you said, starting deals from big New York publishers. Everyone was doing graphic novels. Everyone was doing their big, huge tomes. Um, and no one was thinking about serialization right. because at that time, Anagraphics and Dean just stopped doing yep. any flops, anything. There was no, there was no uh, in between yep. uh, small publishers like Retrofit yep. doing anything. Yep. Um, so it never even occurred to me to even like serialize something or do smaller other, you know, outside of e-commerce. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I started serializing, it, 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 it was like, it was kind of an aha thing for me uh, because I realized I love serialization. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm doing comic books because it lends itself very well to that. Yeah. Uh, um, and I really haven't looked back. I try and serialize everything. I, I only really did one book, a celebrated summer. That's the only thing I did. Is 
its own graphic novel. Mm -hmm. It's not even. I think after that experience, that's when I started the end of the fuck. After doing that, I it was a reaction. Like, I didn't. I, don't, I think I didn't have to do that again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, labor over pages and sure, not, sure, not sure. Any feedback and show. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, getting that feedback right is a is a is a really yeah. powerful thing. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. you know speaking of getting things done on time. I, people were reading it. Yeah. It was like that's a kick in the ass. You yeah. know, it's like all right, I got yeah. get the next one out. Yeah. And having stores who were like, we're waiting for the next one. Yes. We didn't wait was the great part because you yeah. actually did the thing that you said, which was so rare. I, yeah. I got to tell you, man. It, <laughs> uh, well, no, it, yeah. I, I mean, it means a lot to have stores reach out, tell you they want the books and, and that they're selling them, they're hand selling them. That that was a big eye opener. Because I, you know, for a few years, I was a big shop, a yeah. old calling shop, trying yeah. to get them to carry yeah. stuff. What was, your, what was your peak on, on how many stores, how many copies? Not, not that many. It's not a lot. Okay. <laughs> it's maybe like 500 an issue. Okay. Uh, but it's hard because I, I would, I kept them all in. So those early issues, I'm sure. Yeah. Because I would do, which was insane. Yeah. Especially once you start dealing with issues yeah. you've got 12 yeah. issues out and then 10 issues of, of her yeah. comic and yeah it starts becoming a logistical nightmare yeah and, and i should say tony shenton was a huge yeah uh, because he has uh shop owners ears where yeah. I, I was struggling to pull it to do you think you attention. could have done it without tony no i don't think so um you know i wasn't in a ton of shop maybe 20 shops of, okay. you know there's not that many Shops, I feel like that carry that would carry that kind of. Thing. I was I was really yeah, hoping you were going to say like two. So, oh. so oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, because that's always been yeah. like the assumption. Yeah. You know, we the retailers we talk among ourselves, and we always think so. There's two thousand sh shops, but yeah. there's probably two hundred that actually give a damn about the medium. Yeah. Uh, that's the wrong way to put it, but you you know what I'm yeah. saying. That are are trying to push things forward. Uh, that. That you only got in twenty uh, stores actually it disappoints me a little bit. Yeah. I was hoping you would say but, it was a much bigger number. But for me at that time, that yeah. was huge. That was, yeah. that was that was a big deal. I mean, it still is. When I yeah. think, you know. yeah. Not not that I I don't it, I it, it, that definitely not like specific names or people, but yeah. where where you were getting paid on time from the stores was was the was <laughs> no I mean because yeah, yeah, because yeah. part of this right yeah. is is the the long term, like I'm hoping 20 years from now, people will be looking at this and how do yeah, I build yeah, a yeah. career in comics? Yeah. So, so what was your experience with that? Were you most of the shops were very good, yeah. at paying in a reasonable amount of time, yeah. um, good enough so that I could just you know, shops that didn't be six months to a year I'd be like, hey, go so much. Usually, go oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and then there, you know, every once in a while, there's a shops that are like, you know, uh, on the verge of going out of business constantly, and I'm not gonna see it. at twenty bucks. It's fine. Right, right. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, no, it, it, and Tony's very good. He, uh, if you don't know Tony Shenton, he's like a one man distributor. He um, just has all these relationships with shops and uh, gets comics like shops. Yeah. He's a and sales rep, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he would facilitate all these orders for ship. So. Sure. I put Tony at percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how that. Uh, yeah. Do you yes. think you could have you could have identified those stores without? That yeah, I could have. Yeah, could've. okay. I probably could have. I mean, I knew the shops. Right. You know, I mean, there were shops I, I could get into mainly in the Northeast because that's where I'm sure, based sure, sure. out of. But, but I mean, like a store like mine, like. Would yeah, you no, no, I wouldn't. To, I, no. Yeah, I had okay. I would. I mean, I knew about you because you have a higher profile of your stuff. Sure. Um, speaking of history. But I'd never been here until today, so I didn't know exactly what kind of stuff you carried. So right. that was that was a surprise when you guys contacted and said. That was not me looking. 
No, I was, I was no, actually no, just no. trying to figure out how some of this. No. Works, you know. <laughs> yeah, no it's, no, it's funny. I've been doing it for 25 years and I'm still trying to figure out how it works. No, I know. I, I kind of expected to talk about this stuff. Yeah. So I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before I keep going down my rabbit hole here, because I can keep talking all night long on the subject. Does anybody here have any questions for, for Chuck? Uh, yeah, we've got a question. Um, so I I don't write scripts. Uh, I write if I do have something, it's very rough. It's like a couple paragraphs, on usually. Um, and then what I do from that, um, I, I, I'll either jump in a dialogue, just start writing dialogue, just writing conversations, or I'll just jump into thumbnailing. So when I have thumbnail pages, they're, they're like this big. Just do them after. Just go through the whole chapter, whatever chunk I'm interested in. Um, and just, you know, it's tiny. No one else could probably decipher it except <laughs> write the dialogue in the mar outside the market. It's, um, you know, just rough action. Just deciding on what like, grid or what grid I'm not going to use. Uh, and uh, yeah. It's in, you know, and it always changes as I go, it's depending on the project. And also, once you get more comfortable doing a story, um, sometimes you can start to skip steps, depending on the pitch. Um, and, um, but yeah, it's, it feels like every, like you never get used to, at least personally, I never have found a formula that I <laughs> stick to. It always feels like starting over. Which is a good thing. Frustrating. Yeah. Like, so yeah. you said these were done in, in ten page chapters. Yeah. So is that like one page uh chapter, two pages per chapter in terms of your thumbnails? Um yeah. Uh yeah, yeah, probably just on one sheet of paper to okay. all the thumbnails on. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> and like I said, sometimes it wouldn't. I would probably. I just skipped it. Just. Dip. It's yeah. It's a, I'm not a. Yeah, I don't. I don't have like a set way. Some people are a lot. And write scripts like. Man, I I I've. Just thought about the idea of writing scripts. It makes. I just can't cannot think that way. Like I can't visually think page by describing. It's, it's really hard for me. Huh. So like if I ever like on the very few times I've been for a tune and stuff, just do rocks. You know. Um say Frank Miller would do with Klaus, you know, just uh, very pages. To me that's the writing. It's not Necessarily typing it. The, the, the thumbnails is. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Follow up? Oh, yeah. So I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, yeah, no, I, I mean, in hindsight, I've, I've, when I sent the final files into the graphics, I was like panicking. You, you, you always second guess it, and I was like, is this the right thing that I should, is this how the story should end? Is this responsible for this and that stuff? Um, but the inevitable to me, to a certain extent. That's how I felt, you know, it, it you know the, the nature of the way I did the book is not letting myself second guess things and just going with that first thought. That, that thing, first thought, best thought, which isn't always true, but that's sort of the spirit I do books like this in because that's that's what I want. I just want that thing onto the page. Not necessarily going back at 
that's and I think that's what active they feel yeah I agree it's it's I haven't gone back and read it uh it's hard for me to read that stuff <laughs> um but yeah yeah no I still have panic sweat to you know, thinking about that right <laughs> uh, so that just, doesn't go away was that there from the beginning oh was it there from the beginning no I didn't know no this book was pretty unplanned as far as the structure I I mean I knew beats I wanted to hit I knew characters um, but it never, ever had a resolution in mind. Just probably until the last few chapters. Close. Until it felt close. I could find. You know, because I don't think I really, I mean, I had a rough idea of how long. I just let it sort of decide itself. If it makes sense. Did, did you have SIDS back on um, all? Uh, mm -hmm. ahead of time i mean yeah i do yeah i do i do a lot of a lot of it's just done in my head uh just i hate that word world world building sure. but i think that comes through in work you even if i'm not putting it you know a character's whole life or whole history town fan happens i feel like i if i know all that i had Land it all. I can put. I can just take little details there. And I think I like to just can fill in these gaps. That's that's really fun for me. <laughs> uh, but I like, yeah. I I like. I do have a lot of that stuff. What there's our history. I think stuff. I don't put it. I think uh, really boring for. Uh, sure. But uh, one likes a data dump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you kind of need to have it. I need to have it in my head for feel real. Sense. Oh, I saw another question in the back. Um. So. I coming of age stuff, teenage stories is something that I'm <laughs> I have done a lot with and it's I I will probably always come back to it to at that time in my life I felt pretty lost. I was you know, I lost uh my, my dad died of cancer when I was eleven. I think part of my brain grew up had to grow up a little bit faster than going around and I shouldn't which is it was, in for a long time uh so i felt all those teenage years i have a lot of like regret and pain so all these doing these types of stories is, is for me like i said i can't vocalize this stuff very well so for me it's like it's not not therapy but it's me organizing all that stuff and all this feelings and just all the frustration teenagers tend to feel feeling isolation you know and it's uh, that's you know that's what the end of the fucking world that's what um as far as writing a female character i used to be terrified to do that I used to feel like I should like <laughs> But I hope it. I hope it comes through as, as true. Yeah, and it felt true to me as how adolescence or yeah. post adolescence feels. I should say not adolescence. Yeah, to me, yeah, it's it's less so that she's a female. To me, it's like right. it's it's just that. Now, now, did was Sid a female character because you thought it was character or was it because you had read a lot of Popeye and you're like I, I'll, I'll <laughs> I don't know I don't know I think I think I think it's just I wanted it wanted her to be a female I think I like I said I used to be scared to write books. now it's favorite <laughs> I feel like I grabbed it. I, I, I think I always uh, 
I think I just identify. I don't know. That's a tough question to answer. Because <laughs> uh, this stuff, I don't, I don't. This is why I make comic books. <laughs> Explain this up. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's it's uh it's hard. Like when people ask you straight out, it's like stuff that I don't really. But, um, but I'm obviously putting out. In the world. It's, it's, it's kind of a hard. Thing. Sure. To, well, let me try it the other way. Let me yeah. let me try it specifically to the influences. Yeah. Right. Because because clearly Sid looks very much like olive oil. Yeah. Yeah. And and Suchus was that of Seeger, and I'm going, holy shit! There's something that, about this I love, and how much of it is, yeah, I mean, the, an affectation, I guess. Yeah, I, the Seeger stuff. It was more about staging and the look of it. Um, and you know, I like I like taking that way of doing comic books, putting. More genuine emotion mm -hmm. that you know, mm -hmm. um, or applying to, like coming of age or mm -hmm. you know adolescence. So it's like an X Men. So, yeah, sure. No, it's about. very much like an X Men. Yeah, book, which um, I was going to ask you about. That was. I mean, I can speak to that. Uh, I think what spurred on. Why I watched Scanners for the first time. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is an X Men movie. Mm -hmm. Probably the best X Men. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that was I was like, oh man, this is what if I what if I kind of did my version of this given, mm -hmm. you know, I have a character. She has these powers that she doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. She's but it, the book's not about that, right. really. The book's about figuring out what she is. Yeah. And it's, this this is know. why the secret part like really fascinates me yeah. because I'm I saw how much of this was you trying to distance yourself from from the angst of it you know by making mm. it really cartoony yeah and and kind of you know kind of specifically cartoony at the same time is yeah. that is that i don't know that i framed yeah, that question i'm mean, kind of like i like i think i like the, the literalness of of that cartooniness mm -hmm. you can express anxiety stuff mm -hmm, with, mm -hmm. with, with weird shapes mm -hmm. uh i I think that's what it's sort of expressing sort of uh, hard to explain emotion, but through it's it's, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's it's just something that I find fascinating and it works for me. It's I think because I can't I can't explain it in words, mm -hmm. it, it makes more sense to me to put it. In my mind. I don't know that I've I've ever read sort of secret Claremont before, yeah. <laughs> before this, which you know was was yeah. kind of a That's fascinating funny. vein to to go to to me. Um, yeah. Did you have a follow up to that? I, I didn't mean to. to, to... That was kind of like what I was. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing yeah I, I don't have a good answer for why she's a female <laughs> but but the angst is just that's i mean dieting stuff that's all that's all that's the auto bio part that's coming mm -hmm. through for me. but yeah thank you good yes a question that sort of ties into that, but also into another of your comic after, which I, I don't know if anyone else here has read. I, I haven't read the last issue, so I'm just asking generally. But that's another female protagonist. Yeah. who's also a murderer. Also, but comes on it very differently, other than yeah. it sort of being out of uh, and a, a you know a metaphor, or sort of an X Men mutation like expression of experience it's more like she finally finds her out yeah. later in life like, violence and it's uh slated different and I'm just like oh, it's yeah it's interesting it answers the, yeah. the why is there a female question or any, anything in there yeah it is kind of sort of a be part of the same 
<laughs> but yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, slasher. When I think about it, I I tell people it's like to me, it's like a an early '80s Brian Palma movie. Um, and I guess I was just there aren't that many female serial killers. That was one of the things I had in my head. Um, what that would be like, and and I also had this where I. I, I I don't know why, but I wanted it to tie in with sexuality. Blood was the only thing <laughs> that like let her orgasm, and so the murder sort of tied in you know, actual sex and violence. Uh, she just keeps getting further and further too, um, and uh, yeah, I've been. Listening to a lot of, you know, serial killer podcasts and stuff like, that. so I, I think I was sort of on that kick. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think my next book, I'm going to try and not have any death. That's uh, that's my goal. <laughs> we'll see if I stick to it. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it's oh, it's it's all yes. Can I, yeah. No, I was. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, for for I am not okay with. It. Um, no, Patreon's weird. It, it, I haven't gotten a ton of feedback, even though I have about a hundred people on there. It's hard to get people to respond, <laughs> but I know they're reading the. I know they're reading the book. Them respond on Patreon, or or is there? I mean, or just pay their, their patronage? Is that the response? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that yes. What you know? Of course, when someone deletes their patronage, I, I cry then. You know, cry myself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. It's like why, why? Um. But uh, yeah, no. I mean, that's. I mean, just the fact that people are to pay three bucks a month to get that comic. That's awesome and that as i get older that's i need less and less feedback i think i just be i am uh, but it's still great that you no know, people and it's a lot easier publishing end of it because i just can print enough for that chunk well so it allows me to get paid while i'm creating this not necessarily have to do all the publishing have left that I used to. It's a nice yeah. And I can, hopefully, a publisher will. Yeah. So, and then this was actually going to be one of my next questions was <coughs> what's sort of the mechanical process between starting a financial publisher at the end of the day? Uh, um, it depends. Uh, sometimes a publisher will. It, it it never starts out like I'm going to do it specifically for this right. publisher that publisher. but at some point the question will come up either from a publisher or my head oh should I find this? and I'm lucky enough to have <laughs> I guess part of my question yeah. and and this like relates to the sort of the physical mechanical realities of doing this right yeah. because as we said we have a lot of people coming out of these schools now they get contracts which they're probably not prepared right yeah. like you've got to create 160 book out of nothing yeah. you know um and but you've taken a much more traditional tack here sort of the i would consider the direct market tack yeah. right where you're yeah. you're serializing a work and then you find a home for it later like mechanically how does this work for you on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of you paying your bills in terms of that like is the patreon supporting you is is the, it, it is the advance from the public like where does it all come in the patreon is paying my rent my bills for the most part, um which is a huge load off like if I if I know that's paid for the month, I I'm a lot less stressed out. Um, so when when I started doing Patreon a few years ago, really, 
I think it really sort of settled some anxiety that I struggled with usually month to month. Um, whereas before I was, you know, trying to put things to get, you know, freelance stuff, design work, mm-hmm. you know, trying to scrape together money. Um, and yeah, you know, it's no secret. There's not a lot of money in comics. I do a book of fan graphics. It doesn't, <laughs> I have any money. It just means it's, you come to a shop like this and buy it. Yeah. Hopefully down the line, it'll to some point. Am I wrong that there probably was not much of an advance on, on this from Fana? That book I didn't take in advance. Okay. I, uh, my first two books, I got advances, which were great at the time. But if I can afford to not take one, I will not take one. Yes. Because then I will just start getting raw. Ro- mm-hmm. And I, as soon as the books are selling, I get to sell. So I prefer to not even take possible. Do you um, perceive a point where you can make all of your money off backlist? I would love that. I feel like that's what I would do. Uh, Slasher is the first book serialized diamond floating world. And that's like a whole new thing that I've never tried. Before. It was fairly successful. It was more successful than I thought it was. Paying for itself. Yes. Nice. And yeah, like the money I got from just those five sheets is more than I've got. <laughs> um, so Do that was really cool. Color? Sure. Yeah, I think yeah, I think color has a lot to do with it, and just being in diamond, and, you sure. know, having stores put on the shelf. Well, oh, but this is That's but like, I mean this is in diamond. Yeah. And yeah. End of the fucking world's in diamond as a book, and um, but also I think a part of it is. The, thing, uh, the other reason I like serialization is that it keeps me visible. It keeps, yes. You know, I have work coming out all the time. Absolutely. And it's um, people see you on the shelf, then you're, they aren't forgetting it. Fully agree. Fully I, agree. Which I think, if, you know, to make regular is very important. I feel like I stepped on your question. Did, did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I know that's. Yeah. Was, it was like this conversation about I have recently done that. Like I'll I'll come up with like a couple designs for a, a jacket. Like for the slasher collection that's coming out, I had several ideas and I put it up there. It's like, hey, what do you guys like? And I put up a poll and I, I, I didn't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It is really good to to have that sort of feedback. It's like it's people that I know are that are really into stuff. How much have to listen to them. How much is Patreon um uh positive versus a time suck? Um, I, man, it, it's, it's funny watching people, friends of mine launch Patreons and all, they all either like fail or because resent it very quickly <laughs> because I think a lot of people set it up where it's, they, they offer too much. Yeah. Um, and I, I always tried to not do, I always tried to just, I would be making comics anyway. So try to get a thing. Okay, I'm gonna do a mini comic every month, probably anyway. So this is a way I can run it through Patreon and more exclusive. So, um, like being able to say, "Hey, this is the only way you can get this," uh, is also a kind of our thing to get. Um, shoot. Uh, well, my my question was kind of the time suck part of it. Oh, oh. it seems like it could really be. Yeah, no, it could um, really draw time away from being creative. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. No, I don't let it do that. I, I'm, mine's not, I don't post a ton of stuff uh, because I feel like the value of the physical things that I'm, if, so I don't, I don't do a lot of like process. I do some, I'll post like process pictures, stuff I'm into. But you know, some people, like my friend Shalfife does these amazing posts of like all oh, his influences and super long essays. And I don't, I don't know where he finds the time. He's, Talk about a work. He's a lot. 
I don't know if Eric finds it. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I kind of set it up to not be that kind of time mm-hmm. stuff because I could see it doing that. Sure. Um, see it. So, okay, so you, you do want Enter the Fucking World as a mini comp, and then Fana comes to you, or you came to them, the collection? Like, how did that part work? That book uh, had some smaller publishers coming to me. Okay. And I was like, oh. Oh, I have to make a decision all of a sudden about this. And Fana Graphics, they were already going to publish Celebrate Summer. I'd already oh, okay. finished that. Um, so I, Eric was like, Hey, I have, you know, I just want to publish this thing. You guys want to do it? Cause I, you know, I was, they had done, they were going to do my book and I was like, Oh, you know, this would work for them. Um, and he said, yeah, totally. And they liked it so much that it actually came out for mm-hmm. the book I had already finished for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I kind of brought it to them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I brought it to them. Now, it's interesting when when end of the fucking world first came out my recollection is and i could be slightly off on this that it was in print for about two weeks <laughs> and then it disappeared for six months does that sound about that sounds right? about right yeah, yeah yeah so what happened what was that what i i i don't i mean I, I can't really say for sure uh you know i know i think for a company like fan graphics they, they probably have to watch how much they sure and I think if they're not getting, even though I know publishers or shops like you and other shops telling me, hey, I'm selling X amount of copies of this one, I, it's not print. Uh, I think they just, they needed to hear a lot more demand, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, to put it back. And, and there, were for, there were forces in fan graphics trying to get the thing back. It wasn't like they were. But I also know, you know, it's tough. You know, they can, as we know, fan graphics has gone through tough times. And Absolutely. I think yeah. And I think they were going actually, through a really bad that financial actually, time yeah, right there. Right after it came out, they were really, yeah. Kim had passed away. Yeah. So I think that problem. My, so my curiosity is, is as you were a publisher yourself at that point, did you feel like they had printed enough or i'm not trying to start a fight no here. no I'm, I'm just sort of curious no i'm, I'm fine being honest i was frustrated yeah. i was yeah. super frustrated yeah. <laughs> i hated that uh you know people couldn't find the book yeah. uh, uh or that it, it shelves uh, and yeah it bugged me i i but i also understood you know and you know i wasn't i'm not you know i know i'm not a dan class or whatever and sure. no, it's not sure a guaranteed sell. I understand. I need to. Yeah. Yeah. Bad. And when it was solicited through Diamond, yeah. it was not solicited with its title, as oh. I recall. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, as wait. I recall, it was it was solicited as with the initials. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I think that Diamond didn't want to put out a book that yeah distributed book that had fucking title. Yes. So yeah, so early on, Fana was like, "Hey, we'll put the word on the cup." This, but they were like, a lot of bookstores, they won't. And I, you know, I this was my second. No, actually, well, technically, first published. And sure. I was like, you know what? Let's just let's not have it on there. I'd rather. It made me think of when I was a kid, and Nirvana's in utero came out, and Walmart word rape on the back of the had a special version made for walmart and i remember a quote from kurt cobain he was like he was like you know when i was a kid that was the only place i could buy records uh so it's not quite equivalent but i was like i'd rather have people have access to them. so but this time around for the, the second edition it was a different story because yeah. there's a tv show and they there's were like TV show there's, yeah. a there's a show. TV show. Talk about there's a TV show. Yeah, I can't now, like, we is that about is, that. Well, no, because I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted yeah, to yeah. do the comics part before we got to the, yeah. the TV show <laughs> part. I mean, does does there's a TV show completely flip the game, or or because you know we we 
I was like, there was a sketch on, I don't know, South Park or Saturday Night Live or something uh, like, Netflix, you got a show, you know, like, it was like, <laughs> literally, like, anyone who calls them gets a show. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they're throwing around real money, and I don't know. How to, how to, uh, yeah. Uh, my thing is not, it's not a direct Netflix thing. Okay. They got involved later. It was already in action. Uh, it's through a British production company. Well, um, they do Misfits. I don't know if, it, if anyone's seen yeah. Misfits. Um, and it's been in, you know, I've been the director, Jonathan and also he picked up any comics. Gosh, comics. 11, 2012. You know. So it's been a conversation for a long time. It was going to be a movie. It was going to be a web series. Things were going to happen. Things fell through. Um, and finally, this current version actually is is happening. Show, um, and uh, and Netflix got involved, I guess, right before they went into production. They, I guess, they do this with a lot of British TV because it's a British. There's a lot of British TV that shows up. That mm-hmm. with the, so it's sort of like that kind of deal. So it's not like it does say it. It is a Netflix original. Sure. So are you are so, you not seeing a lot of front end money or Oh so I got I got a not that you need to talk about No, money. I got a very nice check. Uh um and <laughs> this year's very relaxed <laughs> as opposed to other years. Mm-hmm. It's not life changing money, but it it's it's great for someone like me. Um it's allowing me to do top. And uh, and I'm really looking forward to see how it affects uh, book sales. Yeah, because um, the book back and and I'm hoping people start seeing this on the TV. Yeah. Start buying. So, when's it? When's it? Uh, G- January-ish, I think. Okay. Yeah. There's, I don't think there's a set date. So okay. Very soon. Well, I'm sure there's a set date soon. at this point. They keep if it's going to be. They keep January, telling me you know? not to say, and yeah. they're like, they're like it's not really set. Right. 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 <laughs> I have to say, like uh, this whole month, I've been I've been looking at the what's up, what's coming up on Netflix. Like I know, I've me been too. Scrutinizing I keep, it, like yeah. so I could like. I know. I keep your waiting. show will be on in three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I keep wanting. I'm waiting too, so I can shout it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's been it's been. I feel very lucky. You know, when I I talked to James Stern very early on, when I first optioned it about this stuff. Described getting options as buying a lot. Yeah. A lot of people get options. Yep. So yep. the fact that it got yeah, and that I yeah. I I've watched it all and it's it's amazing. Okay. How long is it? It's eight episodes. Okay. They're twenty to thirty minutes. Long. It, it it surprisingly was very much the chapters really like it, it's very quick. Um, it's basically a two. And they stay true to my story, and they add stuff, uh, some characters. And you know, after I watched it, I, I the right Charlie Kell, the is email said, loved it. Very upset that I, the characters you came up with, <laughs> and all the stuff that she had added. She was like, "Oh, that's the biggest compliment." Yeah, yeah. She was nervous about what I thought. Laughing and in tears, <laughs> watching it. So what's it? What's it like? Like having this thing that you were creating as a mini comic, for God's sake. I mean, you know what I mean? Like not even a full size comic, yeah, yeah. right? Like a mini comic that you were printing out and stapling yourself. And there's no, I can't, I can't even like, I couldn't fathom it. Like until they flew me over in May, and I was on set, and I heard actors saying lines that I. Had. I you know, no pad. And it's you know, this weird feeling in your body. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh my God, like this is really actually it's I don't know, it's it's very a very strange feeling. I'm just glad it doesn't suck. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so so does this mean uh that uh I'm not okay with this is 
more likely to be optioned by some? Has it been optioned? No. Uh, not yet. But yeah, I've talked to people. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm sure. I, I don't know. We'll see. Nothing, you know, I can't talk about anything. Sure. Yeah. Is that a thing you want, or or is it? I mean, other than of course the money's nice, and you know, yeah, but I mean, I, or or is it just the doing the comics? Yeah, I mean, like wh when the end of the fucking world started to get rolling, I made the decision early on. I want to be a writer. I wasn't gonna like pressure, put pressure on them to like make demands like that. I I trusted the director. I'd seen what, but if he's able to make this thing, it's gonna be pretty awesome. And I also I also appreciate in adaptations, and they're allowed to do their own. Thing. I hate they're pulled to whatever work or adapt it really doesn't work the same. <laughs> so I I was very conscious of that. I I was and I love British TV. I was very excited, right, to see what they did with it. I you know because it. I think the reason they liked it was because it feels very American. So it's, yeah, it's like a bad, very American road trip. Kind of does thing. it does it change the way you approach future work? Probably not. But I, I'm just wondering, like, oh, maybe this will be option. So no. I need to I need to be like this. No, no. I feel like younger me would have let that go to my head, but now I can't. I wouldn't get anything done. Just think mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> um i know it's all like it's it's i'm i'm still pinching myself about it. it's like feeling super lucky i'm not oh i'm gonna build a media empire or something right. <laughs> you know. the next robert? yeah i'll be the <laughs> fan of graphics robert kirkman <laughs> i know my landlord my landlord <laughs> My landlady came down the other day. She's like, "So are you like Robert Kirk?" She uh, loves The Walking Dead. She loves watching it. Uh, so you're like Robert Kirk? Uh, I was like, "Yeah, I am." Uh, yeah. <laughs> you do your own Charles Foreman's Secret History of Comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that'll be that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. All right. I like this. No. Uh, <laughs> we have more questions uh, from from our audience. Our Actually, ask really amazing questions yeah, tonight. Awesome. Anything, yeah, please. I think we touched on this a little, and you were saying that uh, Slash was through a uh, floating world and in diamond. But do you have any interest? Have you had any opportunities to contact other, like other publishers you have with, collaborating with other artists, kind of superhero comics uh, or anything like that? Uh, I've I've dabbled in some things like that, and they haven't really gone anywhere. I don't know. I don't know how I'm interested in it. I don't know if I would what I did itself. I don't know if it. <laughs> Have you gotten a call from Marvel? No. Actually, surprising things that turn out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. He worked on old that's and he uh, a dirt shot. Secret <laughs> secret love thing. Um yeah, no, I mean we he I Fife and I were the most recent. We talk all the time. <laughs> and we do we talk about this stuff, you know. Well I mean he's doing I mean I'm super jealous because he's doing Blood Strike next year for Rob Bell. Mm -hmm. uh, which is book thread kids and i mean i get to, i get to do the back cover uh, of each hmm. issue so i'm very very excited about that <laughs> cool um yeah i mean it's something i i you know i i of course i about and i'll just cross that i i don't think it's something i'm gonna see i think i'd rather do my own stories spend time Pitching because I think that's what these sure. folks do. Like they spend all their time pitching, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I think I'd rather just do stories I want to self publish. Show. Yeah, I'm pretty intent. 
How did Floating World come to you? Did you go to them? How did how what was the process there? Yeah, they came to me. Jason, uh, the owner, sure there came to me because um, I was interested in doing. I think I had mentioned some doing a comic book that would go I'm serializing because mm-hmm. um, I never got to do that, and um, it often yeah, but and it was. Been super awesome. He's a really smart guy, and he's positive, or he's very, um, he's uh, a great editor, and then he gives feedback. Mm-hmm. It's just very quick with answering emails, which mm-hmm. is nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a great experience, so I, I'm 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 hoping to do that more in the future. Uh, this whole next year, I think I'm just doing a comic. Uh, I don't talk. Yeah. But I, yeah, I don't know. It's something I want to do more. I'd love to do more serialization. It was a really interesting um, uh, experience in, in picking this book because uh, just so you know how the sausages, um, the, uh, the, Managers Doug, Julie, and I um, uh, sort of go through the monthly catalogs and see what's coming up. Uh, we pick kind of somewhere between five and eight books, uh, and then the staff vote on it. And this was, I think, the first time ever. I think that you had we had a creator who had two books. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> well, it feels like it was the first time. Come on, I was trying to tell a good story. Don't don't step up my good story, dude. <laughs> It was Jeff Lemire. That's true. That's true. Yeah, he's he's the other guy. But you know, I mean, we were at literally voting between between this and Slasher, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it, that was an interesting experience, I think, for us. And so you you've got a lot of things going on at this moment. It's yeah, it, that happened. Like this year's been crazy. I've had yeah. so many books come out this year, <laughs> and sometimes it just happens to you. Like some years I don't I have, you know, whatever I'm self publishing, yeah. but some. Sometimes it all just it's like yeah. I'm kind of looking forward to after this year taking a travel so much. Yeah. Well, and I imagine that down. you're probably going to be doing a lot of travel this month once the show comes out, right? Like, well, we'll see. I mean, they want you to see. <laughs> you do Colbert? No, <laughs> I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. <laughs> but. Audience, you had you had one, didn't you? Oh, uh, yeah. So with how kind of loose your uh, skeleton, uh, told the same story. So I'm just curious what that. Oh yeah, that was that was the conceit from the beginning. I think I think because I used to like stay away from. That kind of thing. I don't. I don't like writing. Shouldn't say. Uh, I think that was the whole. For me, that's what was the hook for myself. Using that sort of element in type of story that I usually. Tell. Uh, to me, that was interesting. It was like throwing myself a. How would I tell? My story. <laughs> Which is what it's a lot of this stuff is. It's like, like I was saying at the beginning, it's just setting up tools that you seem arbitrary. But because they're there, I react to it. It's fine, interesting. People reading it, fine, interesting. Sausage. That's how yeah. the sausage is made. But that's the fascinating part about this to me. You know, because there's a million ways to make the sausage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, unlike sausage, where there's really only one way to make the sausage. <laughs> uh, with comics, there's a, literally a million yeah, ways. Yeah, there are. There you are. Know, I, I've, I've done 55 or 60 interviews with creators, and I don't think I've ever gotten the same answer twice yeah. of how you create, where it comes from, what's going on in your head. Uh, that's kind of the magic of comics. How much do you think about... Um, about 
icing of a book. And because to me, comics are the silence between the panels more than the panels themselves. Does it, do you subscribe to that or do you disagree with that as a notion? Mm, yeah, I think that makes sense. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really think about that too yeah. much. Um, but pacing for me, I think the nature of the way I do, I did this book because there's such short chapters, it forces me to distill a lot of beats and whatever feeling I want to get across mm -hmm. in a chapter. Uh, it makes me um, sort of cut the fat out. Yeah, yeah. And get to it. But also I, I tend to slow time a lot. So value that. Being able to, yeah, it's all about picking the, the right moments. Uh, it's a weird thing that I don't know exactly how to, how, why I, the spots I, um, it's hard to talk about because it's, it, it's yeah. unconscious in a way. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's just from all the movies I've watched. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. I mean, I, I, I do get the comment a lot. Even though you wouldn't, you wouldn't look at this, these books and say they're cinematic. I get that a lot. I get that from a lot. Of feels like set up like their story. So, yeah. Um, just, I mean, I definitely don't think about it like that, but um, I, I feel that comment a lot. Yeah. This is the thing I, I didn't ask that. yet. How do you how do you work physically? Are you is it all physical? Are you drawing on paper? Yes. Are you doing digital? No. Okay. Um, yeah, eighty percent is on paper. Mm -hmm. For this book, the dots, the half tones are just are done in Photoshop. Um, but like, are you and how are you drawing? Are you drawing same size, two up? This is about the size I drew this. Book. Okay. Um, slasher on eleven by seventeen. Okay. Um, and that's another thing, like you know, because I want this to be immediately draw really small. It's my brain figure out a lot easier. Like it's a, it's a Move through it like a giant sheet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like it's it's kind of like how I imagine. I'm gonna sort of use the at least from what I've seen, they, they draw fairly small stand stuff. Monks. Just to, just to, yeah. I was how you draw the physicality. Of, yeah, of yeah. So this is like all that's all dip pen and nib. Um, I've started getting into brush more. Um, I made for um, some of the Revenger stories. I made my own Zipatone because okay. you can't really buy it anymore. You can, yeah, I know it's weird. You can buy like um, you can buy it from Japan. But it's really expensive. <laughs> Hit the buy button. <laughs> so I figured out. I found this like sticker paper. I have tone on it, and did some stories of that. Exactly, sting up the tone sheets, which is really fun. It's labor intensive, and I had I was lucky enough to. I emailed Steve to set because I'd never done it before. And he gave me the crash course, <laughs> which was really. <laughs> Uh, here you're channeling Seeger in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Slasher, you're channeling Miller, I would say, to my eye, yeah. in a lot of ways. Is is it a different approach as you're drawing the pages? I mean, obviously it is. I, I, that's yeah. a stupid question in a way. No, but I, I think. I mean, I think I know what you're. It, it, the difference is sort of like the rendering of a line versus black you yeah know? yeah yeah so like i i always describe myself as stylist it's something when i started out i was really frustrated i remember like um, at school uh, at ccs i a visiting artist and <laughs> ivan bernetti came and i was having a with him. i don't have a style i feel like i don't have a style like how do you was asking him, how do you get a stop? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he just like basically told me not about it. Yeah. it, it just, 
uh, which I appreciated at the time, kind of my mind. But since then, I've kind of realized that I am, I at least I consider myself stylist. Like, like making a style up, ending up the story, of the telling. It's never, I'm never, I feel like I'm never fit story into my style. It's, it's always informed whatever the story. Absolutely. Or what it, work I'm looking at, you know, Slasher is looking a lot of Miller, of course, but also, uh, you know, Munoz, which yeah. is, yep. is looking at Fist yeah. and City. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, you know, I like, I like surrounding myself by work. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, some would say it's like, off, and it kind of is, but it's also, I, I enjoy channeling other options. Like, I find that fun. I feel like either it turns into its own thing. Yeah. And I, yeah, I don't think a lot of people work like that, but it's just, it, I've come to accept it and I mm-hmm. like it. Now. Like, I find I'm letting myself consider that a positive thing mm-hmm. To, mm-hmm. to feel like I have a certain style, a recognizable style. Yeah. Even though, I mean, people say they recognize my work. But, sure. But I, I just don't see. It. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think particularly into the fucking world, this and uh, and slasher all are very different visually. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that I would ever be able to say. That. No. Yeah. People. Guy. Yeah, yeah. I do get a lot of. Yeah. People are like, uh, "This is you too." What? <laughs> so who's 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 the next artist you're looking at? That you are. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, don't know. I haven't decided. Yet. I'm <laughs> still on. The, I'm probably still on this. You know, kick. At least right now. It's really, I, so, I, I really want to let myself get dirtier. Allow myself to really lay the blackout on the page. Yeah. I feel like I get a little anal when I get to doing pages to something. It's here without, but not too much because it, I distract. I want to like push myself. See. <laughs> is there uh anything you can tell us about this project at all not really no i i i don't i yeah i probably should okay yeah just because i get myself in trouble i'll make yeah. promises that i don't know don't necessarily want to yeah. keep no. so are we are we <laughs> six months from seeing new work is that oh no january i'm gonna okay. I'm gonna okay. as soon as I'm done with this trip, kicking my ass in the gear and I'm do I'm starting a new comic for my picture on screen. So that's another thing, giving myself deadlines. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> I like doing that. I dig it. Do you have any last questions from the uh our home audience here? Anything to know? Dude. Hey. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for thank you for thank you for your cartooning. You're really goddamn good. You're no, you are, man. And and I I I this is one of those books that I felt really, really strongly positive about supporting just because of of your voice and that you're trying to do stuff and yeah. I'm not okay with this. Fantastic book. If you haven't already bought one, uh buy one. You can buy one from us too. Uh, but but buy it. You don't have to buy it from us. <laughs> um, I want to say that I want to tell everybody that next month's book, the January book, will be Black Bolt um, by Saladin Ahmad and Christian Ward. Um, that'll be available in January. Uh, Saladin is going to be here in person. I have a date, but I didn't write it down, so I'm, I'm a terrible person. I think it's the, the second week of January, I think. Um, and uh, and Christian will be on, uh, on because he's in England. Can't bring him in. Check it but I'm, I don't, I don't make that kind of money yet. Um, and yeah, and that's, that's what's coming up next. Um, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for coming on, talking to us. Thank you for coming in and being part of the audience. Um, I, I wish you nothing but success in the rest of your career. You're, you're a guy who's a pure comics guy in my mind. And, uh, and we need 25 more of you. 
and, and comics would be so much better. Thank you so much. And, and thank you. Awesome. It's <laughs> such a. Thank you so much. See you next month. <laughs>